here. Yeah, I think it already started. Okay, yeah. The best time of our life here. Yeah, we met in Japan. We we rotated there. I went there for a month. Two months. Two months, yeah. It was a little bit longer. Hola a todos, bienvenidos a mi canal y bienvenidos a esta nueva sección donde estaré entrevistando a médicos de diferentes partes del mundo. Por favor, déjenme en los comentarios de qué países o qué temas les gustaría escuchar y si les interesa este tipo de videos para seguirlos haciendo. El día de hoy entrevisté a una amiga de Pakistán. Vamos a escucharla. Hi, Julia, how are you? Hi, Vena, so good to see you after such a long time. I'm good, how are you? Fine, thank you. How's everyone watching here? Um, I'm with Julia from Pakistan and she's going to tell us a little bit about medicine in her country. So hi everyone, my name is Dr. Julia Shafiq Bhatt. I belong from Pakistan. Uh, I'm, a, I'm basically a Pakistani. Pakistan is a country which is located in South Asia. It is bordered by Afghanistan, China, India and Iran. Uh, the capital of Pakistan is Islamabad, it ha the largest city uh, is Karachi. So Pakistan is a very diverse country. When I say diverse, I mean it in the form of culture, in the form of area, in the form of geographical location. So we have like all kinds of areas in Pakistan. We have like mountains, the second highest mountain of the world is situated in my country. And then we have lowlands, we have highlands, we have... Um, So the language that we speak in Pakistan, it's Urdu language, which is basically a mixture of Arabic and Persian. And uh, it's the country, basically it's a religion, con religious country, right? So 96% of the people in Pakistan, they're Muslims. Just a fun fact about my country, I'm sure everybody loves football. About half of the footballs around the world, they are manufactured in Pakistan. So you see football, like the ball. Yeah, the footballs. Did you know that? No, I didn't. <laughs> That's really interesting. Footballs are manufactured in the world. They come from Pakistan. But can you tell us a little bit of how can you become a doctor in Pakistan? So in Pakistan, you know, if somebody wants to get into a medical school, you have to give an exam. It's called as the medical college admission test, right? So once you give it and you pass that exam, there's a percentage which comes out after a few weeks if you get into a medical college or not. For medicine, it's a five years program. And once you're done with these five years, then you are supposed to work at a hospital, right? The working experience that you need to get is one year in order to get your degree. So you after do five one, years and you still have yeah. to do like a six for getting the degree. Yeah, you're right. Okay. Yeah. Experience. But that five years is also divided into different paths, you know, after each year you're supposed to give it an exam and if you pass it, then you move to the next stage, right? So there are five years, five exams. Okay. There are different subjects for different years. I would say that the first three years, they, they are basically theory based, so you are not into the practical field of medicine. You study the books, you study the diseases and stuff like that. In the last two years, the fourth year and the final year, there is integration of the practical side. That is, you start going to the hospital, you start dealing with the patients, you take histories, you do examinations. Also, um, in the last two years, the subjects are very different, right? It's ophthalmology, it's ENT, it's surgery, it's medicine. So for all these things, you're supposed to see real patients. You're supposed to, you know, like see the signs, check the signs and symptoms and then give a clinical diagnosis, do the examination and stuff like that. Okay, this one's good. Do you use cadavers? Initially, when I was in my med school in the first two years, we did practice on cadavers. We did first that. two years? For, yeah, for two, because uh, for two years, the subject anatomy basically requires study from cadavers, right? So in the first two years, we study the subject. So we did study on cadavers like we practiced and stuff, but now the trend has changed because of a lot of moral obligations and because people think it's inhuman and you know, there has been a lot of talk going on about it. So 
now I haven't seen in the last three years. In I'm talking about my medical school, Lahore Medical and Dental College. They don't use it now. So there has been like a bit of a change, I would say, because people are you know going towards more realistic and advanced representations of human bodies, like they have maybe fake bodies or yeah. like reality kind of or advanced representations of human body rather than using a cadaver. Do you have any animal based like practice like for example in Mexico we do surgeries on like bunnies or uh, pigs But why not on you Yeah I know like that's how it is done I don't know Okay No 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 so in Pakistan we do not have animal based learning We like we have hands on experience on the humans like obviously we have we like we do our study before doing it. It's not like we just jump onto humans and you know we cut them and stuff like that on surgeries and stuff. But animal-based learning, I don't see it happening. When you get to practice on patients, how much do you get like to do on the patient? Like you said that you have this uh, two years where you already get to be with the patient, but can you actually like touch the patient, explore them? Are you able to take yeah. like blood samples? Maybe do like some um, tube kind of things around the body so when when we're in med school especially i would talk about the last two years because that's the time when we spend most of the time in the at the hospital um, during the last two years yeah you we do touch the patients we do examine them but we do not do any procedures okay yeah so there is only examination and that's it but once the five we get done with our five years and then we have to work at the hospital for a year then obviously we do everything we even perform surgeries i don't i wouldn't say we perform surgeries on our own but we do assist them sometimes they ask me to you know like if there's a minor case they say dr huria why don't you go and do this like drain the abscess or you know the minor cases so the hands on experience is a lot in pakistan i would say is there like a national exam to graduate or do you or is this sixth year the one that makes you graduate so um, I'm not sure if I will be able to answer this question rightly because right now the government is changing its, its route it's not implemented on my batch like the 2019 but we have heard that from next year onwards in order to practice in Pakistan after six, even after uh, the five years you're supposed to give an exam so it's still in the talk and we do not know what's going to happen but when I was in med school and when I graduated I didn't have to give any exam like the final exam obviously I gave it but after that to practice I didn't give any exam now if you want to get to the residency do you have to make an exam so in Pakistan if uh, somebody wants to uh, do the residency after five years and the 12 months working experience at a hospital you give an exam it is called as the FCPS exam. So you give that exam and if you pass it, then you start working at the hospital in which you are allocated according to the percentage that you get. And then after four years, you become a specialist. And But during that four years, there are also exams that you're supposed to give. So like after two years, there's an IMM exam. And after the four years, there's part two. So during the four years, you're supposed to give two exams. After two years, part one. After four years, the final exam. And once you give that, then you become a specialist. And all specialties are four years then? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because in Mexico, it varies. Like, there's some specialties, there are three, some are four. Okay, so after studying medicine, can you work as a general doctor? Or do you have to, um, to do like a residency or do you have to do a master's degree or something to be able to work? Like you're going to do this year, right? But you don't have your degree. So after getting your degree, can you keep going like as a general doctor or do you have to do something else to be able to work? So um, you complete your five years. When you're done with the five years, you have a 12 uh, months working experience. And after that, you become a general practitioner. It's no call as a GP. You can work after that. You work, you can work as a GP, but obviously a GP, his um, work is limited, right? He cannot perform surgeries and stuff like that. For that, you need to give an exam. It is called as FCPS in Pakistan, which is basically the Fellow of College of Physicians and Surgeons in Pakistan. It's a four-year program. 
and after that you become a specialist but before that once you get done with your house job and you get a you get a card by the pmdc the medical and dental council of pakistan you can work after that you can open a clinic but obviously you're not skilled enough to go into a specialty like you can't become a dermatologist after working for 12 months right so it's you are just a gp okay as a gp you can work but in order to specialize you have have to give an exam that i just told you the four years exam which is the most wanted residency or specialty in your country so in pakistan you know i don't think uh, a lot of females would like to go for sub specialties that would you know have a negative impact because pakistan is a developing country at the end of the day the girls are going to get married so their first priority is to have a specialty that's going to help them manage their time right so the females here prefer fields like dermatology ophthalmology radiology and the males they go for surgery most of them go for surgery and the females prefer fields which would help them manage their time but then again uh, himena it's a personal choice somebody might see this interview and say that oh my god what is she saying i want to be a surgeon and i don't think anybody anything is going to you know so but i but but i did see a research a basic no it was an article i read an article a few days back it showed that more than 50% of the um, men in pakistan they go for surgery and it's allied Yeah, like in Mexico, for example, I think ophthalmology is one of the most wanted like residencies for men and women in general. And then um, otorhinolaryngology is also like really wanted. In surgery, there are more men than women, but there are a lot of women wanting to do yeah, surgery right. too. So yeah, like you say, it's a personal like choice. Do like I, I told you right now, like you do the residency, but then can some doctors do like a master or a doctorate? Like, is that something you do in Pakistan or most doctors don't really go to that like path I I personally believe that no um, yeah obviously people do go for it but if you have to if you ask me for a percentage I would say that there's a higher percentage that people give FCPS exam rather than going for masters or doctor okay right so they go for it rather than these but it depends you know it, it's a personal choice it depends on person to person somebody would want to you know go into a sub specialty but become a surgeon become an ophthalmologist the other person would prefer going to it is present in pakistan but i would say the ratio is not that much so do you get night shifts yeah we do and how Just, long are they we have a 32 hour shift after every fourth day and it's is it like um you always get 32 can you get more because there's a lot of work like is there days you will be staying more in the hospital or is there like a rule that you cannot do that or something like but yeah the minimum requirement is 32 depends on the person if somebody wants to work for 42 hours nobody's going to stop you but i think that's humanly not possible because in the end we're all just humans and everything needs a break <laughs> yeah in mexico is kind of the same like we have like a set hour but then Everyone stays just longer, not really because they want to, but it's kind of because there's like an emergency or something in the end. Yeah, same, same in Pakistan. Are there any foreigner students in your country? I wouldn't say that there are a lot of foreign students. Like the ratio is very low. Out of 176 students, there was only one uh, girl who came from America. But she too wasn't an American. She was basically a Pakistani who has been living there. What language do you get taught in? Is it English or is it Urdu? It's English. The books are in English and we speak in English with uh, the doctors but because the national language is what Urdu, right? In Pakistan. So when we're dealing with the patients and you know everything we speak in Urdu. So I told you it's a very diverse country. We speak English, we speak Urdu, we have our other languages as well Balochi, Sindhi, Punjabi. So and we are trained in a way that if a patient comes to us and the patient is speaking in punjabi we have to explain everything to the patient in punjabi it's not like we're going to speak in english because most of the people or the patients at who come to my hospital they don't speak english right How so this language is you speak i can speak 
a bit of Japanese. <laughs> I'm sure you would know that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, I'm not. I'm not better than Imena when it comes to Japanese. I can speak English, Urdu, a little bit of Arabic, and then Punjabi, of course, my language. Okay. For if you guys want to know something about me and Himena, which everybody must know because we became friends like three years ago, four yeah, years more ago, or less. four maybe. Four. Yeah. yeah, yeah, four years. So we met in Japan, and I saw this girl at the hospital. She was like talking to everybody, and I was like, finally, somebody knows how to speak in English because you know when you go to Japan, there's a language barrier, and you can't really talk to everybody because my Japanese was horrible. So I saw this girl, and I was like, hey, um, are you working here? Are you a foreign student? She was like, yeah, I'm from Mexico, and then we had like the best time of our life there. Yeah, we met in Japan. We we rotated there. I went there for a month. I don't know how long were, were you there for, Julia? Two months. Two months. Yeah, it was a little bit longer. <laughs> and we had a lot of fun. Like not only in the hospital. Like we we were able to visit a little bit of Tokyo and everything. And and we made some solid friendships there. Look, we're still in touch. We are. Me too, I miss you, buddy. <laughs> you know, why are you Wait. laughing? No, just, can you repeat again the last two years? So I know what you're talking about. <laughs> kind of, it's similar. There's someone sliding on the back of your... I'm gonna cut that part, <laughs> don't worry. Sure. Yeah, that's my cousin. Have at least a little bit of that. And uh, it is the language... <laughs> Sorry. 